Hello, my name is Roy Simpson. I'm a professor of mathematics from Kasumnas River College in Sacramento, California. This lecture is all focused on slope, which is one of the most important topics in linear equations or when dealing with linear equations in algebra. We're going to split this up into four parts. Part A will be a talk about ratio comparisons and the concept of steepness or grade. Um, or pitch, all these things mean kind of the same thing. That'll be like our uh, introduction to slope without being too mathy. Part B, the following video, will be an actual introduction to slope, a mathematical introduction to the slope. Part C, we're going to add a little more detail to that, introduce something called the uh, slope addition property. And then finally, part D, we'll go into understanding the meaning of slope in applications, which is uh, of all the parts probably the most important uh, and again like I said slope itself as a topic is a, a dominant topic within algebra and in fact uh, is a huge idea within calculus so let's go ahead and start uh, this part with just like a ratio comparison a 2010 Honda Insight cost $19,800 now that's uh, a rough approximation, probably actually not very true uh, anymore, and has an expected mileage lifetime of 200,000 miles. A 2009 Porsche 911 cost $76,300. Suppose you baby it and it finally, finally dies at 700,000 miles. Which car is less expensive on a per mile basis? This is an idea that comes way back from uh, pre-algebra, actually, or even elementary algebra which is most of the stuff when you talk about linears in reality. This is just a comparison of what is a better purchase. Just like when you go to a store and there's uh, a bag of chips where uh, you get 16 ounces for $4 or you get 20 ounces for $5 and you have to determine which is the better buy. Actually in that case uh, it's a tie I think. But in this case uh, we want to know which one is less expensive on a per mile basis and I kind of gave that as a hint that per mile per is sort of a way of saying uh, dividing by so per mile means dividing by the number of miles so we want to talk about dollars per mile here so we have two objects I'll go ahead and write them down we have the 2010 Honda Insight and we also have the 2009, an older model, Porsche. I'm not going to write, well, I guess I could. Porsche 911. While it's much more of a stylish car, much, it's also very expensive uh, for repairs and whatnot. So the 2010 Honda Insight is 19800 and for that price, you'll get 200,000 miles. So that's basically you're just saying I'm spending about 20 grand for every 200,000 miles. For the Porsche, you're spending $76,300 for every 700,000 miles. Now we're going to compare these two quantities, and these are called ratios, by the way. This is a ratio of the cost to the mileage uh, for the Porsche, and this is the ratio of the cost to the mileage for the Honda Insight. Now bringing up the handy dandy calculator here, I'll just go ahead and type in uh, the first one here, the Honda Insight, 19,800. I'm going to divide that by 200,000. So on a per mile basis, that's $0.099 per mile. It's about $0.10 cents a mile. That's what you're spending uh, for the lifetime of that Honda Insight. Of course, this does not include a lot of other things like uh, the cost for repairs and so on and so forth. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit more that would normally go into this to be a realistic situation, but um, let's just pretend that we've simplified it down a little bit. And then of course you have 
the Porsche, the Porsche is 76,300, and that's for 700,000 miles. Porsche is about 11 cents a mile, 10.9. So this is the cost in dollars for the Porsche. Now, which car is less expensive? Well, obviously, uh, the inequality goes like this. This number is less than, the number on the left is less than the number on the right. A lot of people have a difficult time, by the way, with this symbol. This is not the focus of this section, but I do want to say that when I was a student, the way that I kind of remembered how this symbol worked, people use a lot of little things, but the fact is the smallest end points to the smallest number. The largest side points to the largest number. That's the easiest way to think of it. Anyhow, uh, so in this case, the Honda is cheaper. Now, don't think that just because the Honda costs less that it will always be the cheaper vehicle. Notice that they're actually very close. They're within two pennies or a penny of each other uh, as far as um, a per mile cost. So it's not a significant um, jump in, in price, even though uh, the Porsche uh, is a way more expensive car initially. Now that, but again, there's a lot of other things that go into this. So this is using ratios to compare uh, things. You could you could talk about uh, the price of coffee at two different um, uh, coffee stands or whatever it may be. Especially when they sell them not at the same size. It's very easy if somebody says, um, you know, oh that person sells a cup of coffee for th you know three dollars. I don't drink coffee, so I don't know uh, what a cup is. Uh, or how much a cup of coffee is, but it'd be silly if to even think about it. if so, if somebody said, "Oh, it's three dollars a cup there and four dollars a cup someplace else." There's no comparison. You know which one's uh, cheaper, the one on the left. But the difference is when they say, "Oh, it's three dollars for one cup there and it's four dollars for one point five cups at the other place." Now you're comparing the same type of object but two different kinds of quantities. One is a cup, the other one's one and a half cups. So in this case, it's not so obvious. All right. And again, we're slowly verging on the idea of what a slope is. Um, and I really love this next style of question uh, where they we're really mixing units here. Uh, which is steeper? So you have a couple trails here. Trail A, which climbs 800 feet over a horizontal distance of two miles, or trail B, which climbs 1,300 feet over a horizontal distance of 8,200 feet. Well, of course, you could draw out the situation, but it won't really help. Let's say that this is 800 feet that it climbs, so this is trail A, over a two mile horizontal distance. So here's trail A, uh, trail A, and it might, you know, dip and whatever, but it in the end it climbs 800 feet over that two mile distance. Trail B on the other hand climbs more, right? It climbs let's say 1300 feet. But, and maybe I should put units on this one, but that's over 8200 feet horizontally. Now what we need to do when you're comparing two objects it's better to compare apples to apples not apples to oranges. And the issue here is that we have a mixture of units. So if I want to know the, the, how steep this trail is, let's just talk, actually let's talk about trail B, it's a little bit easier. Um, trail B, let's talk about how steep this trail is. If you're going to measure steepness, if let's pretend the world was your world and you could make up what steepness is, you have to think about steepness as the fact that some it's a function or, or basically it's a product of some type of uh, rise that's happening, right? So you definitely want to include this rise of 1300 feet in your description of how steep that trail is. Of course, if you just say, oh, it rises 1300 feet, well, that could be over 5 million miles. And that's not a very steep trail <laughs> at all. Um, so you definitely want to consider the fact that it rises 1300 feet over a distance of 8,200 8, feet. So both these numbers should be involved in when, when you talk about the steepness of this trail. 
So here, let's just define the steepness uh, to be, well, the change in vertical over the change in horizontal. In other words, the change in vertical distance over the change in horizontal distance. This actually is going to verge very, very close to what our mathematical definition of slope is going to be in the long run. It just seems that this should be what we're talking about when you talk about how steep an object is. You say, well, it rises 15 feet over 5 feet or something like that. So the change in vertical for trail B is 1,300 feet over a horizontal distance of 8,200 feet. Now this is a fraction here, and this fraction you can cancel or basically say that feet divided by feet is just one, right? So these two pictures turn into the number one, and so you can reduce this fraction quite easily down to 13 eightieths. All right. Trail A, then we're going to use that same idea. The steepness of trail A in this case is going to be 800 feet over two miles and all of a sudden you realize that feet and miles don't cancel nicely you're gonna to have to make an exchange here in the exchange we're gonna change two miles into feet this is called unit analysis or dimensional analysis and the easiest way to change from one measure to a completely different measure is to start and say well okay listen I know that I need to get rid of the word miles so I'm gonna multiply this two miles by a fraction where the denominator of the fraction has the word miles in it and the numerator of the fraction has the new units now of course this fraction that I'm multiplying two miles by has to equal one if it doesn't, then I'm actually changing the distance two miles. If I'm multiplying by a fraction that turns out to be five, let's say, then I'm basically saying, oh, two miles is the same thing as five times two miles or ten miles. That won't work out. So you have to make sure this fraction is equivalent to one. Or in other words, that the numerator is the same distance as the denominator. And it doesn't take much to look up how many feet there are in a mile. In one mile, there's 5,280 feet. You can Google that, Yahoo, search that, whatever you want to do. So this is our conversion. When you do that, the word miles cancel, and you see that what you're left with is 10,560 feet. Notice the word miles is no longer there because I canceled nicely. So I see that two miles is 10,560 feet, or in other words, now we can rewrite our fraction here as 800 feet over 10,560 feet. And, I, and now you see again in this fraction, the words feet cancel, and you get this nice 80 over 1056, which is still reducible because I think uh, they're both divisible by four. So that's 20 over... Uh, 250 plus, uh, let's see here, which equals 5 over 66. I had to spend a little moment there just to kind of think about that. Now, here's the deal. The original question was saying, which is steeper, trail A or trail B? Well, the steepness, the one that's going to be steeper is the one that's uh, that is a larger fraction, essentially. And comparing these two fractions, there's a couple ways to do it. You have... 5 over 66 versus 13 over 80. Now, somebody could be very cruel and have you find like denominators and all that fun stuff, but with numbers like this in the denominator, um, we have technology on our side. So I will just go ahead and grab this thing and say what's 5 out of 66, and then I'll compare that to 13 out of 80. Okay. 13 out of 80 is 0.1625 and that 5 out of 66 is really like point it's 0 0.08 essentially so 0.16 this this number over here is about twice as large so this fraction on the right hand side is a much larger fraction so I see that trail B actually is the steeper trail
that idea of steepness is uh, super important for us to get used to what a slope is. Now, there are some words that also mean steep. Um, so you'll hear slope, uh, steepness. These all mean kind of the same thing. Pitch. Um, so many other ones. Grade, like the grade of the road. So uh, incline, I suppose, can be used. There's a lot of different words for uh, slope or steepness.